Hey, this is my updated review on the HP Omen that I purchased about uh, a year ago on Black Friday for about $8.99. Um, I did it, about two videos on this. One was just a general overview uh, review the, of this product, and the other one was a, a slight tutorial about how to upgrade the AIO. Um, I've had this now for about a year, and I do have a couple more uh, opinions or updates and hacks on this. So I just wanted to give a little general overview for the folks who will own this and are interested on um, some upgrades that you can possibly do this. Uh, so fast forward about 10 months. Um, I've now had this for uh, quite some time. Uh, prior to me owning this, it's been about over a decade since I've actually owned a, a gaming PC. Um, so I've learned a lot since then. When I first got this, I was a bit of a novice. Um, uh, so let's just go ahead and jump into this. So um, you can see right here, the RTX. This is the RTX 2070 Super. Uh, when I first purchased this, I got the bare stock uh, version of this. Um, HP does actually have several versions of this for sale. I got this at Best Buy, by the way. Um, and uh, the $899 version uh, that I got, the, the Black Friday uh, price, it brought a 1060, a, uh, a GTX 1060, which was okay. Um, it was a, a mediocre uh, GPU. Uh, it wasn't really what I wanted. Um, so originally I had this uh, 1080p. Uh, curved monitor that I got from Costco and all I really wanted was something that could just play a 1080p monitor at 60 uh, FPS and that's something that the, the GTX 1060 really struggled to do um, and by the way at, at ultra settings is what I was aiming for um, so what I ended up getting is on Craigslist I got the uh, 2070 um, I'm sorry a GTX 1070 um, hybrid it was an EVGA with a radiator and if you see my previous videos you will see that how I used to have a radiator uh, right down here um, and that was okay um, but then I upgraded to a uh, a 1440p um, 144 hertz 32 inch monitor as my main monitor and uh, that GTX 1070 wasn't good enough um, so then I had to upgrade to something which is uh, this one I re recently got about um, almost a month ago. So this RTX 2070 Super, it's a good GPU, but the bone stock um, 500 watt PSU was not good enough or not powerful enough for this GPU. Um, this at the time of release in 2018 uh, used to come with a 500 watt PSU. I think HP has changed that. Um, and they were selling this um, with a 500 watt PSU with an RTX 2080. Not sure why they were doing that because uh, NVIDIA actually does recommend that the bare minimum be a 650 watt uh, PSU, but HP was selling this with a 500. If I can go back in time, uh, at the time that I purchased this back in Black Friday, I would spend a few hundred dollars more and actually have purchased the, GT the RTX 2080 version of this. Um, and then I would be able to save myself a good amount of money because um, that's a good good enough card and all I would have done is really just upgraded uh, to the AIO and, uh, and the PSU and I probably would have called it a day. Um, so let's go ahead and fast forward to what I've done. So uh, when I first got this, it came with a one stick uh, DDR4 16 gigabyte um, RAM and I think it runs at somewhere around 2,666 megahertz or something something of that sort. Um, this, at the time, I really didn't realize about dual channel versus single channel, and I feel a little bit disappointed and upset with HP that they gave just one stick. Uh, I would have been happy if they would have given two eight gigabytes sticks, and I would have just left it as is. But because they throttled me uh, and a lot of folks who bought this uh, PC down to just a single stick, I was forced to have to buy another 16 gigabyte uh, RAM at the same speed uh, in order to get that dual channel. Uh, so now I have 32 gigabytes RAM and that's a little bit of overkill. Um, but uh, it is what it is. Um, now with this motherboard, this is a HP mo motherboard that does not allow any overclocking. Now the CPU is the 8700 non-K model, uh, and with that being said, with the non-K, you, you really shouldn't be overclocking it, but I would love to have the opportunity to have a, a, a BIOS that would allow me to make some changes. This is a bone stock BIOS from HP um, that won't allow you to do anything. Uh, if you go into BIOS and boot up in there, 
Um, you can really just see uh, the specs, but that's about it. You can't really change or do anything. And what I'd love to have the opportunity to try to overclock my memory, as well as change my fan curve speed for the case fan. Because um, the, the Achilles heel, the, the biggest problem um, that I have with this case is the fact that it has really poor airflow. Um, all it brings is just one back exhaust fan. It's a, like a 92 millimeter fan. It, it really doesn't do any justice, especially if it have an RTX 2080 that this comes with. I can only imagine that this thing overheats. So back when I had the 2070, I'm sorry, the 1070, the GTX 1070 hybrid, uh, because it was a radiator um, single fan, the radiator used to be down here and I really didn't have any thermal issues. I had the radiator on top for my CPU, the radiator at the bottom for the GPU and things were nice and dandy. When I upgraded to this RTX 2070, things changed. I have a lot of thermal problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you in a little bit some of the hacks that I had to do. Uh, so as you can tell down here, I have a fan. Um, now the stock version does not bring a fan. And if you see in my previous video, you would see what I had to do. Uh, if I have any footage, I'll try to see if I can insert it right here uh, where uh, I will show you the bottom of the case. Uh, what I did is I used a drill. Uh, with a drill bit and I lined up the holes and drilled from the outside in um, and made four holes where I can mount this um, 100 was it yeah 120 milli, millimeter uh, case fan um, and now you can see it I kept the filter on so I drilled through the filter through the um, case uh, in order so, so I can have a little bit of dust protection at least from the bottom um, and the way I wired this is behind uh, the motherboard behind the case all the way to the top of this corner back here um, there is uh, there you go you can see it um, that is the case fan wire so I have a splitter um, so it connects to the motherboard and it splits out to four uh, pins or, or four different um, headers uh, and then what I do did is I connected um, obviously the case fan back here to it um, behind uh, the panel down to this, so this is now running off of it. Um, now, in the in my last video, I didn't know how to remove the back panel. I obviously had to figure this out. Uh, so back there, there is a screw, and I did pop it out. Um, I did that when I upgraded my PSU. So I did remove the 500 watt PSU. Now, keep in mind for the folks who are, I would say, if you don't have an RTX in here, you're still running maybe a GTX. 500 watts is probably just barely good enough, but you may, I would recommend you probably upgrade it if you can. Um, now, the unfortunate thing is I upgraded one that has braided cables. Um, you see that sleeve on the cables? And what that does, it makes the cable very thick. So uh, the issue I have is um, I really wanted to have some good cable management. The original HP, they have like this big loop of wires that's down here. I want to get rid of that because I knew I was going to put a fan down here. I wanted to have some ventilation. So with these thick braided wires, you can imagine looping them in behind that motherboard. It's a very, very tight fit for this back panel so there's a little bit of a bulge um putting that back in I, I really did have to struggle and there's several times i actually had to go back there and make some tweaks uh, to the back panel um, and it was not fun putting back in so um yeah these braided cables they may look okay but they're a pain because uh, this case is very tight especially behind uh, that back panel if you're interested on in knowing how to remove that back panel i would uh, recommend that you go to hp's website they actually have websites i'm sorry vid deos on how to remove the back panel as well as how to upgrade to psu um, so definitely check those videos out if you guys are interested in doing that yourselves um, this case fan is a modification that i did again i used a drill uh, and here is the biggest uh, modification that i did, did so you can see there's a fan where um, a hard drive is supposed to be so that wasn't an easy modification. So let's show you a few things that I did. So HP, they do provide, and keep in mind, this is the bare stock version of it. So I got a 256 M.2 um, SSD. That's that thing right there. Uh, I then upgraded my secondary hard drive to this Evo, Samsung Evo, um, that I got also on Black Friday. Really good price. It was about, I think, 100 bucks or maybe less than that. Probably like 70 bucks. It's a really good price for one terabyte um, SSD um, and then this S this hard drive this mechanical 7200 rpm hard drive this is what originally came with it as your secondary hard drive um, this is now my tertiary hard drive so I really don't use this I have like mass media on that one terabyte one um, and I have it 
dangling on double-sided tape um, up here on the outside of this case. Um, this one is also hanging inside of uh, this tray with double-sided tape. So I did that really just to save space. Um, I don't mind double-sided tape. Um, that's really get hurt with that. Uh, but in here, there was this bracket. So if you guys are interested in doing this modification, this is what I really do re recommend. Um, this fan down here, by the way, this is the easiest modification. If you have the tools, you would I would recommend this second modification. So you can see how there's some metal that's bent there. I got some metal like scissors, these shears that you, you that you use to kind of cut sheet metal, and I went at it and removed the, this bracket because this 120 millimeter. Uh, fan does not fit in there. Uh, there's a bracket in a way, so I did have to cut it with those shears. Once I cut it with, with the shears, I then had to make some space for um, air to come in. So let me go ahead down here and remove this wire without trying to get hurt. Let's see what I'm talking about. First, let's remove some of these top wires. Let's see what I'm talking about. Take a look at that. So here's the outside of the case. I had to make some major modifications. So I have uh, an angle grinder with a um, cutoff wheel that I use. I go to Harbor Freight all the time to buy some tools. Uh, so you definitely need to have the right tools to do this. You can probably use a Dremel, but the Dremel heads, they wear out very fast with this type of metal cutting. Um, an angle grinder is uh, probably the best way to go. Um, trust me, I know, because I tried. Um, so I made a big hole, a square hole for enough air to come in. Um, similar to what I did with the bottom, I drilled some holes to line up um, some screws. Um, I'm missing one screw up here. You just couldn't get that one to line up perfectly, but hey, three out of four isn't too bad. And then um, once I had that, uh, then came this plastic shroud that covers the front. So this metal, this middle piece here that is removable. There's some clips so you can remove the middle piece and just work on, um, there's, there's actually two separate pieces of plastic that's molded together. So I removed the middle and what I did um, is with the first bigger plastic piece, I made a square hole to kind of line up with the square hole I have over there. And then for the front center piece over here, which was, a, a, you know, this is removable with some clips. I just made some slits through here. It isn't the prettiest, most aesthetic looking thing, by the way, but it's functional. And I'm more about functionality than I am about aesthetics. Um, this case, the biggest issue I have with this case is thermals. This runs very hot. So with this RTX 2070 Super, when I first got it, um, keep in mind, I didn't have these two fans when I first installed it. I only just had the one exhaust fan uh, and my one AIO. I was getting near 90 degrees, about 88, 89 degrees Celsius on this GPO. It was running pretty hot. Um, so I had to do a couple things. The first thing I had to do is I had to reverse the order of this, um, my AIO uh, fan. So what it was doing before was drawing cold air in, but then it was being exhausted right out. Uh, so my CPU was running really, really cool, but my GPU was way up there. So I, what I had to do is I had to sacrifice a little bit of temperature on my CPU. I had to uh, flip um, the fan around. So now it's exhausting out. So now I have an exhaust going this way and exhaust going that way. Um, with the fan down here, I have a little bit of a stand that I keep it on. So it, more air, uh, can go in, but this actually didn't do that much. Um, I just tried the, the fan at the bottom cause it was the easiest thing to do. And my thermals did drop down a little bit, but it was in the low eighties, about like 81, 82 degrees Celsius. Um, so it did drop down a little bit, but not as much. And I, I really wanted it to be near the mid 70s, if at all possible with this. And this modification brought me there. So I'm now running about 76 degrees Celsius on this RTX 2070 Super, and it's overclocked. Um, now it's not the greatest. There's obviously other cases out there that allow better uh, airflow to reduce that temperature. Um, but given what I'm working with here, I would say this is a, uh, a good little modification that I did here. Um, so again, these two fans down here, they're wired to the motherboard back there with a splitter. Um, the issue I have with that is, uh, it, it is a PWM sort of power. I really don't know the correct acronym, but, um, I would like to be able to manually adjust these two fans to run a little bit higher. Uh, cause again, the BIOS does not allow you to do any fan curve, uh, especially on this version. Um, so one of the things I'm considering is because I had to upgrade my PSU, I have an extra SATA power cord back there. So I'm going to try to tap into that. 
Uh, I found this um, device on Amazon that would connect to that and then the fans and then it would have like a little knob that I'm thinking about putting right around here that I would manually adjust um, and then increase the fan speed just for these two to allow more cold air to come in and maybe reduce the temperature by a few more degrees um, and that would pretty much be suffice. I would say long term what I really want to do I'm going to chuck this whole thing. Um, I've learned so much from this so you know thank you HP with this PC um, but what I'm eventually going to do is uh, I'm going to get a new motherboard and a new case. I'm going to uh, pretty much remove most of the items here. Um, CPU, RAM, SSD, CPU, uh, I'm sorry, PSU, GPU. Um, probably keep some of the fans on this case. But uh, I want to get a new case that allows a lot more airflow. Uh, preferably a case that may have two or maybe three fans in the front uh, that allow more, more airflow in the front and then exhaust out in the back and the new motherboard of course i am not taking this omen motherboard with me I'll probably get an asus or uh, a different motherboard that allow me to overclock it now my cpu does not allow overclocking because it's not a k model but you know eventually in the future i can probably upgrade to a k model um cpu uh, so for the folks out there who are who own this uh i would recommend um easiest hack that you could possibly do is this down here it will help a little bit um, if you have a AIO and you're having thermal issues with your GPU, you want to flip that around so it, it exhausts and blows out of your case. And for those who are willing to um, take that risk and have the right tools to do it, I would recommend this fan up, up front because this has probably made the biggest difference. Uh, I went by so far and actually drilled some holes back there. So if I zoom a little bit, um, I drilled additional holes into that metal so that air is coming out um, so whatever I can do to try to help the airflow and cool down this GPU um, is, is what I try to do and achieve so uh, hopefully this was somewhat informative for the folks who or, or the owners who already own this um, I would say that in one year of me owning this uh, I've done so many different upgrades to this but uh, I've learned a lot and I'm probably ready to take it to the next level for my next break thank you